Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 29 days of going to a GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to look at the topic of Pythagoras, or Pythagoras' theorem, or as I like to call it, Pythabulous. So in terms of Pythagoras' theorem, if you've got the code Maths revision cards, card number 76 would be really useful for you, and that's on Pythagoras' theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how Pythagoras' theorem works, how we can use it to find the lengths of longer sides of right angle triangles, how to find the lengths of shorter sides of right angle triangles, how to use Pythagoras' theorem to show if a triangle is right angled or not, and how to use Pythagoras' theorem in an applying question where we maybe got a situation where Pythagoras' theorem can be used. So let's get started. Okay, so today's topic is Pythagoras. So Pythagoras' theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the lengths of the two shorter sides of the right angle triangle, and c is the length of the hypotenuse, the longer side of the right angle triangle. So here we've got a right angle triangle, and we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of this diagonal. Again, if you want to try this yourself now, feel free to press pause and to try the question yourself. Okay, so here we've got a right angle triangle, and we're going to label the sides A, B, and C. So A and B are the two shorter sides, so I like to call it A and B, where A is the smallest one and B is the middle one, if you can. Uh, you can't always do that, but it doesn't actually matter which way around you label them. So if you had to call it A and B, that doesn't really matter. But we have to call the hypotenuse this longer side C. So we've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's Pythagoras' theorem. And now we're going to substitute in the values that we know. So A is equal to 6, so we've got 6 squared, plus B, which is equal to 8 squared, is equal to C, which is equal to X squared, because C is X, so it's X squared. Now we just need to work this out. We're going to do 6 squared, well 6 times 6 is 36, so 36 plus, and then 8 squared, 8 times 8 is 64, so 64 is equal to x squared, the length of that side squared. Now 36 plus 64, that's equal to 100, so that's 100, is equal to x squared. So that means the length of this side squared is 100. This side obviously isn't 100 centimeters, so that's far too big. So that's the length of the side squared. So what we're going to do is to find the length of this side, we're going to square root. So we're going to do the square root of 100, and whenever, so x is equal to the square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So that means the x is equal to 10 centimeters, and that's it. So in this question, we label the sides of the right angle triangle, a, b, and c, where a and b are the two shorter sides, and c is the longer side, the hypotenuse. We then wrote down Pythagoras' theorem, and we substitute in our values. We then worked out what those were, so we squared and so on, we added, and then what we done was we got the x squared was equal to 100, so we done the square root of 100, and we got the x is equal to 10. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we've got a right angle triangle, and we've got the lengths of the sides being 18 centimeters, x, and 20 centimeters. And again, feel free to pause the video and to try this question out yourself. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to label the sides of the triangle. So A and B are the two shorter sides. Now, I know that C is the longer, so actually I'm going to call C the one opposite the right angle, the hypotenuse. That's equal to C, so let's call that C. And then A and B, I'm not actually sure which one's the smallest in the middle, so I'm just going to call it A and B. It doesn't actually matter which way around you label those. So let's write Pythagoras' theorem down. That's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we've got A squared, that's X squared, so X squared plus, and then we've got b squared, that's going to be 18 squared, is equal to c squared, and that's going to be 20 squared. Now, this is a calculator question, I'm telling you that now. Uh, so we've got x squared, and then we're going to do 18 times 18, or 18 squared on my calculator, that's plus 324 is equal to, and 20 squared is equal to 400. So we've got the x squared plus 324 is equal to 400. Now, we want to find out what x is, so we don't want this plus 324 here, so I'm going to subtract that from both sides of the equation, so subtract 324 and subtract 324. On the left-hand side of the equation, we're going to get x squared. That's fantastic. And on the right-hand side, we've got 400, take away 324, and that's equal to 76. So the length of this side squared is 76. Now, that, this actually isn't going to be 76 centimeters, so that doesn't make sense here because this is the longer side. So we need to find out what x is, so we want to get rid of the squared, so we're going to square root. So that means that x is equal to the square root of 76, and the square root of 76, whenever we work out the square root of 76 on our calculator, we get that's equal to 8.71779 and so on centimeters. And let's round that. I'm going to round that to two decimal places. So that's going to be 8.7. Then we've got one seven, so two centimeters to two decimal places, to two decimal places. And that's it. Okay, so we've looked at using Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of the longer side of a right angle triangle and the length of a shorter side of a right angle triangle. Pythagoras' theorem actually can be useful actually to show whether a triangle is right angled or not. So if a triangle is right angled, then Pythagoras' theorem will work. Actually, I might be giving away too much of a clue for this question. So here's a question now. Feel free to press pause and to try the question if you wanted to. And then whenever you're ready, press play. 
Okay, so the question says Alison draws a triangle with side lengths 8 centimeters, 15 centimeters, and 17 centimeters. Is the triangle right angled? So I'm going to draw a little sketch. So I've just drawn a little sketch there of a right angle triangle, and I'm going to label the sides as a right angle. 8 is going to be the smallest side, 15 is in the middle side, and 17 centimeters is the longest side of that right angle triangle. So there's a right angle triangle, and let's label the sides A, B, and C. And if this triangle is right angle, so actually I've put a right angle, it might not actually be a right angle. If Pythagoras' theorem doesn't work here, then this is not a right angle. If Pythagoras' theorem works, if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, that is a right angle. So let's have a look and see if I need to rub that out or not. So Pythagoras' theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a is 8 squared plus b is equal to 15 15 squared, and that's equal to c squared, which is 17, which is equal to 17 squared. And then 8 squared, well, 8 times 8 is equal to 64, and then plus, and 15 squared is equal to 225, and then 17 squared on my calculator is 289. Now, this is the key bit. If this adds together to be 289, then you get 289 equals 289. That means that Pythagoras' theorem is satisfied. It works, so that means that it would be a right angle triangle. If you add these two numbers together and it's not equal to 289, then this is not a right angle, and then Allison hasn't drawn a right angle triangle. So 64 plus 225 is, in fact, 289. So we get 289 equals 289, and that means that Pythagoras' theorem works, so that means it is the triangle right angle. The answer is yes, it is right angled, and that's it. Okay, so Pythagoras' theorem is useful to find the lengths of shorter sides of right angle triangles, longer sides of right angle triangles, or the hypotenuse of right angle triangles, also to show if triangles are right angled or not. But sometimes you might find that Pythagoras' theorem is included in other questions or diagrams that don't obviously look like right angle triangles. So here's a question here. The question says find the perimeter of the trapezium. So we've got a trapezium, and we're going to be using Pythagoras in this question. So things to look out for whenever you've got Pythagoras' theorem, it could be that you're given an isosceles triangle, and you need to chop it down vertically, and you'll end up with a right angle triangle and a right angle triangle. It could be that you've got maybe a rectangle, and you need to cut it across diagonally, and you get a right angle triangle there. Here we've got a trapezium, and we've been asked to find the perimeter of the trapezium. Well, perimeter, adding up the distances around the outside. So we've got 26 centimetres, 15 centimetres, 20 centimeters and we need to find the length of this diagonal here and if we can find the length of this diagonal we can then add together the lengths of the four sides and then that's the perimeter of the trapezium so let's find the length of this side well how do we do that well if you have a look here we can actually draw a line going across horizontally like so and then that would be a right angle triangle here at the top and in terms of the lengths, the length of the base of it will be 15 centimetres. That's 15 centimetres there. And then in terms of this distance here, well, if this line is 20 centimetres and this line is 26 centimetres, the extra bit going from here to the top would be 6 centimetres. So we've got a right angle triangle where you've got the two shorter sides being 6 centimetres and 15 centimetres. And then we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of this diagonal. So let's do that. So let's write down Pythagoras' theorem and let's also label our sides. So A and B are the two shorter sides. Let's call that A and that B and then the longest side, the hypotenuse. To see. So a squared would be 6 squared plus b squared would be 15 squared and that's equal to c squared which we're trying to find out c squared. So 6 squared 6 times 6 is 36 plus 15 squared well 15 times 15 is 225 is equal to c squared and that's going to be just c squared. Let's do our 36 plus our 225 and that's equal to 261. So we've got 261 equals c squared. I'm just going to turn this around so I've got c squared equals 261. Now this diagonal isn't 261, that's that value squared, that length squared. So we now need to square root. So c is equal to the square root of 261 which is equal to the square root of 261 is equal to 3 root 29 or 16.15549 and so on. So the length of the side is 16.15549 and so on centimetres. Now we want to find the perimeter of this trapezium, so we now need to add up the lengths of the sides. So we've got the lengths of the sides, I'm just going to circle them in blue. So we've got 26 centimetres, the length of that side. We've got 15 centimetres, the length of that side. We've got 20 centimetres, the length of that side. And we've got the length of the diagonal. So let's add them together to find the perimeter of that shape. So we've got 26 plus 15 plus 20 plus 16.1554 and so on. And let's see what we get. So plus 26 plus 15 plus 20 is equal to 
77.15549 and so on centimeters and let's round that let's round that to two decimal places so that'll be 77 0.1 and then it's 55 so let's round up to 0.16 centimeters to two decimal places to two decimal places so look out for pythagoras theorem questions whenever you're dealing with maybe isosceles triangles or rectangles or even trapeziums trapezia um, or even finding distance between points on grids and so on and if you want more practice on uh, Pythagoras' theorem in the description below there's a link to the practice questions on Pythagoras' theorem and they'll be really useful for you to practice and that's it so in today's video we've looked at Pythagoras' theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared we've looked at how to find those lengths of those sides of those right angle triangles if we know two of them we've looked at how to show if a triangle's right angled or not and we've also looked at how to apply Pythagoras questions. Now, I highly recommend today that you look at the practice questions in the description below, because those practice questions will have a variety of questions in different situations, which will just mean that you're a bit more confident in applying Pythagoras in a range of situations. So I hope you'll find that useful. Also, if you've liked this video today, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So obviously there's 29 days to go today. So tomorrow there'll be 28 days or four weeks to go into your GCC Maths exam. So tune in tomorrow at three o'clock to watch that video on YouTube. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.